Hi everybody, Jim Salmons here from the Kayak Fishing Show. Um, you know, sometimes you can have as much fun rigging up your kayak as you do fishing from it. Uh, particularly in the winter months, when maybe you're not getting on the water quite as much. Uh, tinking around on your kayak's a lot of fun. Um, one of the, the key pieces of equipment that we use on our kayaks are electronics and uh, fish finders. Um, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I am rigging up a new uh, Raymarine Axiom fish finder, uh, complete with the uh, Nakwa battery setup. And this one's actually going to have a uh, remote control as well. So um, now I've, I've rigged up many fish finders on the Jackson Kraken in the past, but this rigging is going to give me a few challenges uh, because the uh, fish finder unit is a little larger. Uh, the transducer is a lot larger than I'm used to. And I'm also again adding the remote control. So I'm going to go through how I'm rigging up this kayak. Um, so if you're ever going to rig up an Axiom on a uh, Kraken, you'll know how to do that. But it'll also give you some ideas on what to think about when you're rigging up any kayak with electronics. So one of the very first things you're going to want to do as you're setting up your rigging is do a, a temporary layout. Um, if you need to tape things down in position or have somebody hold them while you're sitting in the kayak. So you know if your fish finder is where you want it, where you can reach it, but it's not going to be in your way when you paddle. Uh, you know, and you do the same thing with rod holders, anything you're putting on the kayak. Do a temporary installation so you can just make sure everything's lined up the way you want it. Uh, also make sure that you've got the, the right tools. Uh, make sure you have all the right components. You have the uh, pass-throughs to go through the hull if you're running wires through the hull. Uh, does the kayak itself accommodate you know, your transducer, for instance? Now, with this Axiom fish finder, that's a, that's a challenge. I've got this very, very large transducer. Uh, the Kraken does have a transducer scupper, but it's nowhere near large enough for this transducer. So we're gonna have to come up with a mounting option for this. So do a temporary layout of where everything is, make sure it's gonna be comfortable before you start drilling holes. Now, as they always say, measure twice, cut once. You don't want to uh, drill some holes and then realize that that's not where you want things. And that has actually already come into play on this kayak, on this rigging. I thought I was gonna do some things one way, and then when I, I laid it out, it wasn't really going to be ideal for me. It wasn't really how I wanted it. So I changed my mind and moved it. So, and I will show you what that is as we go through this video. So I knew that one of the biggest obstacles or hurdles, if you will, uh, in the installation of the Axiom fish finder on my Kraken kayak was this transducer. This uh, transducer is considerably larger than the transducer scupper on the Kraken kayak. So it wasn't gonna fit up in there. And you need it sticking out slightly for the side imaging. So my next thought was to use the stern of the kayak and the existing inserts that would hold your rudder on. These kayaks come rudder ready. So there are two inserts into the plastic um, that I can use as an attachment point. Now, I don't generally use a rudder, so it's a great thing that I can use that's gonna give me a little extra support. So I grabbed some um, aluminum that I just had laying around and kind of laid this out to see how it was gonna work for me. So, mounted to the back, I could attach the transducer here. Now, I kind of liked it because it was a nice sturdy uh, setup, but, it was going to cause more drag and potentially catch on kelp and that sort of thing. But also, with a 10 inch long uh, transducer, it's just going to make my kayak that much longer. And this kayak's 15 and a half feet long already. So, my next thought was to go down at the back of the keel line and mount into the plastic. I've got interior access here, so if I wanted to through bolt it, anything like that. Now, 
the thing I liked about this, it would be a cleaner installation. It would uh, have zero drag, and it also didn't give me that 10 in extra inches off the back of the boat. It's only a couple inches back here. Now the downside to this is that I would be putting holes in the kayak below waterline. And though I thought this would work, I'm just not a fan of putting holes below waterline in the kayaks. So my next thought was to kind of use the best of both worlds with that, uh, with what I had available. And that was to incorporate the inserts at the back, the inserts on the, uh, under the skid plate, and an aluminum bracket. So I went to Home Depot and bought this eighth inch thick, two inch wide aluminum bar. And so a little easier to work with than that thick one I had. And spent some time working with this to get the right shape. And now this is gonna lay up on here really nice. I'll be able to mount the transducer to that. So I've got a really nice secure mount for my transducer without putting any extra holes in the kayak. So for running the cables for the transducer up to the head unit, basically you wanna go into the kayak and then come back out of the kayak. So you need to have these um, pass-throughs or watertight connectors. Uh, there's different types, clamshells. Um, this one came with the uh, Axiom fish finder uh, and I went ahead and got a second one because they generally these things are made for going into the transom of a boat and then it goes to the unit. Well I need to go into the kayak and come back out of the kayak. So I got an extra one of these and then you just got to kind of lay it out and see where do you want to go into the kayak. Now I'm going off the stern of the boat so I was thinking of going into the top rail near the stern and then just running it all the way up to the fish finder but um, because this is a new fish finder and it's this big transducer and there's a potential of me getting a different transducer where I wouldn't mount it in this same orientation, uh, I really don't need to put an extra hole, you know, it's a one inch hole into the kayak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this actually on top of the rear hatch. Um, that way, if I decide this is not the route we're gonna go, it's gonna be a lot cheaper for me to replace that hatch than it is to you know, just have a, a one inch hole in the top of the, of the kayak that I'm not using. So to install this uh, pass-through, I'm gonna use a one inch hole bit and just, I'm gonna mark it off where it needs to be, drill that through, and then I'll use a little RTV, some marine goop, to really get a good seal on it when I attach it. Check the fit. Oh, well, that's going to be sweet. I made these holes a little bit small so these screws would actually thread into the plastic of this cap. So just giving it that little bit more waterproof. So I added two more pass-throughs up on the front of the kayak here. One for the transducer, one for the power and uh, remote control. Then I mounted the fish finder to a Yak Attack mounting plate that goes between the two gear tracks on this center hatch. So I've got a nice secure uh, mounting system. So the next step here is gonna be to mount the remote control. Now I played with a couple of different areas and this is where again it, it comes down to really laying things out and seeing if they're gonna be where you want them. My initial plan was to put the remote control on the rail kind of by my seat. Um, 
I didn't feel like I could see it well enough. I also felt like because I do like to hang my legs off the side of the boat and sit side saddle a lot, it might be in the way of my legs. Um, so I've decided instead to mount the remote control to the back of the center hatch. Uh, I can put that on a piece of gear track right back here and then just run the wires down through here and it's gonna be really clean and simple. And again, if it's something I decide is not exactly where I want it, you know, replacing a center hatch is a lot better than putting a hole in the side of the kayak someplace that maybe I don't want it. So that's gonna be my next step is to uh, get some of this gear track right here and attach that with a backing plate and so I'll have a remote control really close. So after installing the gear track, I uh, added a ram ball and an extender and then the ram X grip to hold the remote control. So very convenient, I can take it on and off I want. If it's in my way for something, it's, it's very easy for me to loosen it up and lay it down. After that, I added a pass-through on the hatch to run the uh, controller wires as well as the power wires down through my center hatch. Again, put it in the center hatch here. So if I change my mind, it's not a big deal. I don't have a hole in the boat. I just have a hole in the hatch, which is not nearly as big of a deal. So after that, the next step is to rig up the power. And for that, I'm using uh, Naqua batteries. So let me go run over and grab that and I'll show you what I did. So again, for my power solution, I use the uh, Naqua 12 volt, 10 amp. Uh, when it comes in this power kit, it comes with all the connectors you need, uh, the waterproof butt connectors, the um, shrink wrap for outside of that. So it makes it a very simple solution. Now, because I'm having to power the remote control as well as the fish finder, I also got one of their Y splitters so I can run both of them off of one battery. Um, also, I needed an extra set of connectors because of having to have two different units. So they have all these great things pre-packaged. So it's a very simple solution. So I ran the uh, power cables through the hatch. Here is your Naqua battery. Again, with waterproof connectors. That goes to the Y connector. Those each with waterproof connectors and one going to the fish finder and one going to the remote control. Again, shrink tube here over um, watertight uh, butt connectors. So just a very, very clean solution. The last thing I have to do really is just to button up and clean up my wiring here. And I've got some uh, bungee cords up here. I can tuck it up underneath the hatch. So um, really happy with how this came out. So that's how I've rigged up my Jackson Kayak Kraken with the new Raymarine Axiom Fish Finder. I could not have done this without the help of Raymarine, Naqua, Yak Attack, and Ram for making these great products that made this solution so easy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, throw them down in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to Kayak Fishing Tales. Remember, always wear your PFD, and I look forward to seeing you on the water.